Hello everyone, it is Mr. Frith. I am here to teach you guys today about periodic behavior and we'll be taking great advantage of Dan Meyer's three acts, most notably the Ferris wheel. And I'll include a link to that in the description if you have not seen it already. It will come in most handy during this explanation. So the first thing you're asked to do is think about how many complete spins the red car will take on its ride. So first of all you can see in the space of 15 seconds the wheel has turned three-eighths of a full revolution. So roughly it is moving one-eighth of a revolution every five seconds. So what you can do is follow it around and think, okay, well, in 15 seconds the car has gone along three of these units. So you can see five seconds, ten seconds, 15 seconds on this car is this way 5, 10, 15. So you can simply continue counting. You can say 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. You'll see every 40 seconds there will be a revolution around this wheel. So what you would say is that this ferris wheel has a period of 40 seconds. It is also worth noting that I have denoted the period with a capital T. This is a physics convention, not necessarily a maths one, but it'll come in handy if you are doing work in physics as well with this sort of behavior. Next you are asked to determine the position that this red cart will be in after the entire three minutes of the ride has elapsed. Essentially what you can do is simply count how many seconds there are in three minutes, which ends up being 180 seconds, and count along how many periods there will be in 180 seconds. So you can do straight division if you like. So 180 divided by 40, which is 4.5. Um, you could also just say that once you have four periods, this is 160 seconds, then it will have gone around one, two, three, four, that is four revolutions, and then for the last one it will only go around half a revolution. So what you will end up with is the red car at this top position here. Something else that it is also useful to do is to look at the X and Y components of the motion of this ferris wheel with regards to time. So let's look at time and motion horizontally as well as time and motion vertically. So what I'm going to do to make things a little bit more convenient for reasons you'll find out about in a moment I'm going to define x equals 0 along this line right there and x will be positive in this direction. So if you look at x here, here, here and here, you'll see it goes here, 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 like that, and back over with these points on that side, it will actually go here, here, there, and there. So it will be sort of wave shape. I'm just going to show you that once more on a graph that is slightly larger and more smooth and clear. I'm going to follow the motion of the red card with my cursor. Starting at X here. What I can also do is follow this motion in the Y direction. So say if we set this midpoint here to be Y equals 0 and right down the bottom is minus 1 and up the top is plus one, 
then we start here, 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 that's y equals 0, there, there up to plus 1, so I can attempt to draw that, so here, 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 and here, and symmetrical on the other way down, so like that. And again, what I will do in this case is follow along with my cursor the height that the red car is above the midpoint, going once again from minus 1 to 1. So 3, 2, 1. Now if I can go back to the horizontal one I had before for a moment, what I can actually do with this graph is drag this over and I can reveal that what we have is a repeating function or a periodic function. You can see that it will follow the same behavior over a set amount of time. In this case it is 40 seconds. So it'll be the same height at 10 that it will be at 50 and the same height as well at 30 that it will be at 70 and 0 and 40, 20 and 60, so on and so forth. This function would overlap perfectly with another one that was placed an increment of n times the period distance apart where n is any integer. In fact, what I can even do is take this one I have also prepared earlier and shift it along very slightly like this. So I would call that probably a quarter of the period. So this is, it should be sitting roughly on 10. Does this one look familiar? It actually looks an awful lot like the one for the vertical distance, doesn't it? Very, very interesting. It is also worth noting that if I had decided the cart started vertically up the top here and then descended or ascended as it were to y equals minus 1. So say if I decided that up here was y equals minus 1 and here was y equals 1, what you would actually have is still this graph but it would be shifted like this. So down and up, down and up. Lucky last, if the ferris wheel were to spin backwards, so it would follow this direction instead of that direction, what would we observe? I would think that horizontally, instead of starting off by gaining x, it would start by losing x. But again, it is the same periodic function. So, instead of starting here, what I think you would actually do is start here. You would lose x, and then halfway you would gain x. Vertically, however, I'm not so sure that anything would change. In either case, you start going from minus 1 to positive 1, and then back around to negative 1. In that case, I think once again, you start at negative 1, go to 0, positive 1, and then back around to negative 1. So in either case, I believe this is what you will have. Negative 1 to positive 1 to negative 1. I think now you have enough information to be ready for the general cases of these functions. What I have plot here are the graphs I was using in the previous section. Here is cosine of x or cos of x and here is sine of x. You might have noticed, wait, sine and cosine, the ratios of sides in right angle triangles? I've never seen these as waves before. And indeed, these are the very same. I think Khan Academy has an excellent video on the unit circle definition of these functions. I'll include a link to that down below. But right now, I think we're just going to press on because that is a little bit beyond the scope of this video.
Now what you might not have realized is that we have actually looked at phase changes of these graphs already. This one you may recognize as the horizontal motion of the cart. This one, not quite. It look, actually looks a lot like the vertical motion of the cart, however it's backwards. It would be right if we defined the y-axis as starting at minus one at the bottom and plus one at the top. But what we actually ended up doing was shifting this graph like this. This is actually the same as a phase shift. As you can see, this graph has gone from cos of x to cos of x minus, uh, that should be pi. There we go. It makes a lot more sense if you go back to the unit circle definition of sine and cos. Once again, I recommend looking at that video. So you would notice that the graph is unchanged aside from starting at a different position. Physically, that is what a phase shift is. You are taking this graph and you are shifting it to what you want your starting position to be. Mathematically, that is the same as adding this factor inside the brackets of cos here. And actually, I mentioned earlier, if you simply change how you define your units, you can get that change without even doing a phase shift of cos. So what I can do is say, all right, let's, let's have our cos x again. What I can actually also do is just say, I'm going to change our axes. I'm going to say that it starts at minus 1. What you can actually do is just plot minus cos of x. And that is the exact same graph that you noticed before. And that is what you would call an amplitude change. Instead of having cos of x, you have minus 1 times cos of x. This actually has an interesting application for the sine of x as well. You remember earlier you were asked to see what would happen if you made the ferris wheel go backwards instead. So it would go, instead of going to x equals 1 and then to x equals minus 1, it would go to x equals minus 1 and then x equals 1. Actually you can do this with an amplitude change or a phase shift as well. I'm just going to start with amplitude change. If you have minus 1 times sine of x, that is exactly what you have observed. It goes to minus 1 and then to plus 1. And you can actually phase shift this right back. to get your original graph. So there you go, minus sine of x plus pi is the same as sine of x. In fact, what I'm going to do is show you, just in case you're not sure. Okay, so I plot that rather sloppily, but there you go. You can see that they are in fact the same graph if you lay them on top of each other perfectly like that. I'm just going to get rid of that one quickly. Now say that your ride were to become twice the diameter all of a sudden. Instead of going to 1, it would go to 2. This can also be done with an amplitude change. So we would say 2 times sine of x will give us a bigger amplitude than before. You see it has grown from 1 to 2 in both cases. Likewise with our cos of x. Now, lucky last, changes in the period of the function. If you were to look at the entirety of the sine function, I might have to actually zoom this out a little bit. There we go. You see how long it takes to get back to zero. You can see it goes up, and then down, and then up. This amount of time is 2 pi for your standard sine function. I can actually change the period of this sine function by altering what is in the brackets. Right now it is x, so it will take 2 pi of x to change that. If I were to say sine of 2x, lo and behold you can actually fit in two whole wavelengths of this sine function in that 2 pi that you had earlier. You can do much the same with cosine. If I were to say this is cosine of 2x, 
once again, the period will have doubled. So you'll be going twice the distance in the same amount of time. And again, you should be able to lay these functions on top of each other. And you'll see that they are the same function down to a phase shift. I'd like you to go away and think about some more cases in which periodic functions could be useful or seen in everyday life. That is about this for this video. I hope it has been an interesting and informative introduction to periodic functions. This has been Mr. Frith. I will see you next time.